Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, I want to make a small little map gambling, uh, in specific, synthesized maps. So, since I'm currently grinding for my last two challenges, one of the endgame grinds is to complete uh, 50 synthesized maps. And these are basically the um, Cortex, Altered, Distant Memory, Distant Twisted, Rewritten, whatever kind of like maps, you know. And I need to complete 50 of those, so I decided to make a small little map gambling today, uh, which is basically 15 sets of the um, the four different um, Distant Memories plus the Invitation, since the Invitation is also part of this entire Atlas strategy, right? And so we have to complete Rewritten, Augmented, Altered and Twisted to then use the invitation to fight all four bosses at once and gain the extra loot. So basically, how am I going to do this? So I bought 15 sets of each one of them. The thing is like, there is maps that are better than others, right? This one, for example, the park map layout is definitely the best one, I would say. So it's like the fastest way and an easy boss. And some others, like I think it was the the um, the augmented distant memory, which is like a, a library, like haunted mansion map, right? It's like not that great to run, but to gain the maximum profit out of it, I decided to buy four of each and then run the invitation, do the next four, run the invitation, because the invitation can also um, include the boss drops or will have the boss drops uh, boss drops based on how it's rolled, right? With the quantity, rarity, whatsoever. So which grants us higher chances of those rings. So basically, um, these synthesized maps, they can give you um, those Herald rings, basically Herald of Fire, um, the, the gambling that we did, Winter's Embrace or something, right, with the uh, Herald of Ice rings, and we saw that just the buff effect plus the um, increased damage, cold damage, could go for like 4 or 5 exalts without even worrying about the implicits, so technically we could get like some really, really good rings out of that. But in the end of the day, I'm here to do the challenges and I'm just gonna drag you alongside to see how many rings can we actually get and if we actually get some good rings. So for the write down, we have the 60 synthesized maps basically, which is one of each. So you see the prices of those are pretty much the same. It's like 75C for the twist and augmented, 80C for the rewritten and altered. And then we have the 10 chaos for um, the uh, invitation itself is about 320 chaos per set for 15 sets for 0.8 thousand chaos, which is around about 33.1 exalt with today's exalt exchange ratio from 1 to 145. So the thing is, I'm running a very, very strict loot filter, right? It's like, for me, kind of end of the league, more or less, right? So I'm just having a super hyper strict filter. There's not even chaos listed on my uh, filter anymore. There's just like exalt, divine orbs and anything where I say, you know what? I have enough currency. I actually don't bother with this small currency anymore. I just want to get my challenges done and stuff like that to try out more fancy builds, basically, right? So that's the reason why I will not... Um, split every single currency in separate tabs just to see how much we made out of it. The thing here is I want to see how many rings do we get out of these um, 60, uh, 60 maps basically and the invitation and also what is the value of those rings. So even Exalt drops I'm going to list it but all the other currency which is like Chaos, Alchemy Orbs, Regals, whatever we find is not going to be included so it's more like a science project rather than a currency farming project, right? So I would, gonna, uh, I would say we're just going to open the first map and by the way um, hundred percent transparent here. I uh, left these maps those the way I bought it, right? That means that they can roll. You can divine those up to five additional random modifiers and up to four additional synthesized global modifiers, right? And this would even cost more. So yeah, I could just spend thirty x uh, and then just spend another twenty x in divines to make the best out of it, right? But no, I'm just gonna I let them basically the way I bought them. Some are like really good rolled with like five and two or something like that, and some are really bad with like three and three, for example, right? Just for that. I would say we're going to run the first map together and then I'm going to run the rest on stream plus giving you uh, the final result with identifying those rings and see if we can actually get something good out of it. Good. The build that I'm using is basically a more explody version of Captain Lance's uh, Mage Blood Righteous Fire build which is basically... Um, using the Ruby Floss to get like a tremendous amount less damage from our Righteous Fire, scaling Righteous Fire with damage over time, damage over time multiplier, like plus all skims the, the usual way. But I'm using a, um, an elevated explosive chest plus Herald of Ash with Ignite plus the Barracks Respite to generate ridiculous amounts of really big chain explosions. Good. As I said, I'm going to clear the entire map plus the boss. And if we get something good out of it, let me quickly... 
like small things that I will gonna pick up because it's still currency in the end, right? But I'm not gonna include that unless it's like a really good um, item or anything, right? An exalted orb or something like that. I'm gonna ex uh, include for sure. Good. Um, other than that, oh, dude, I love this build. It just like you know, hold on the button, just run, and explode things. I don't even know if my build is actually capable of doing the bosses. I, it's 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 a mapping character, right? They're not really a bossing character. I don't know how tanky we are, but in the end of the day, we still have like six portals, so I think I should be able to do uh, the map bosses. The question gonna be like though, um, for the invitation more or less, right? So let's gonna uh, kill off the first boss. I don't even know if I just pop my wild righteous fire. Should be fine. Yeah, I could just face tank him. Okay, that's pretty much fine. Uh, I think this is the way that all the bosses are gonna go, depending on the map modifiers. But the invitations are actually going to be the fun thing, because, you know, fighting four of these bosses, I mean, they can always, like, do pretty harmful stuff to you, basically, right? So, let's just explode the rest of the map, because killing or finishing the rest of the map sounds, like, weird when you play a build like that. Oh, man, these explosions, it just... Oh, I love ignite builds, what should I say? Ignite, explosions, proliferations, chain reactions, this is my take, dude. This is this is what I like in this game, and that's why I would uh, prefer a build like that over actually something like Essence Strange, just because of explosions, and explosions bring fun, right? And Righteous Fire as the pure, like, incarnate of lazy builds, basically, right? It's just good, what can I say? Good, that was the first map, basically. I picked up two splinters, a map, and the glove. So basically, what I'm going to do is, like, collect all of the boss loot uh, in my tap here. Probably gonna use a quad tap. I'm not sure. Let me grab one of my my 18 quad taps here, and we call it uh, Synth Loot. And we're just gonna pop in everything here, and once I'm done with all the maps, all the invitations, um, I'm gonna talk to you guys again. Uh, and then we can identify all the loot, all the rings, and we can see what we actually got out of it. All right, guys. I'm gonna run the maps, see you in a bit. All right, I'm done with running all the 60 um, synthesized maps, including the invitations. And I'm here with the, the rundown, with the write down, what did we find, what was the good things, how many rings and whatnot, what was, were the best rings. I know I said in the start that I will identify them uh, on this video, but in the end of the day, uh, I want to save some time for you guys, right? Because if I do uh, in the identify and then price check, this video is going to be another like 30 minutes video. So I did that up front and I put down all the stuff. So let's take a look at the write down. So my initial cost was 33 exalts, the 4,800 chaos. I did get a total of 10 storms gift gloves. This is like the things over here. 13 masks of the tribunal, um, 6 shields that I cannot pronounce, Peri, Pitaya or something, and 38 synthesized rings, which were these ones. And I split this in two parts, which is basically the map loot and the boss, or at least the invitation loot, right? And as you see, the map loot was a lot better than the invitation loot, but the invitations are still there, and we did them, and we also made profit out of those. So those three rings dropped from the invitation, the rest is from the maps. One thing I want to note here, because I did not do that in the start, okay? So I was running all of them on stream, and luckily some guy after like the third, fourth run said like, um, why why does your rings only have one implicit? Why don't you have three uh, implicits? For example, this ring here, right? This was like one of the first runs here, right? And the thing is, I actually forgot to enable the um, Atlas passes for it. I didn't really bother because my intention of this gamble or whatever is how many rings can we get right but obviously if you spend some um unmaking orbs and you spec into the uh, neural pathways the vivid memories as well as the uh, synthetic source this is actually that you get three synthesized implicits on your rings which is like a way higher chance to hit something crazy as well as this well fractured item and so on well rolled fractured items which actually gave me a base for over 25 exalts okay good this is must-have, okay? Do not do not be as stupid as me and forget this, okay? But it was only like for the first five runs, uh, and then I swapped it over, and that means that almost all the rings have three implicits, and only a very, very few is only one, just because, yeah, MBX is stupid. Anyways, so um, what was the biggest loot, basically? Um, the thing is, like, I price-checked them as good as I could, but Storm's Gift, some of them, like, they usually start, like, 5C or some, right? We did not hit any sick modifier. Um, 
that means that I don't know who wants to buy intelligence, 15 evasion, cold damage, or some fire resistance, maybe, you know, that's why I said, like, you know what, 10 chaos at peace, whatever, I'm probably gonna um, vendor all of them anyways, once I'm done with this video. The same pretty much counts for the Mask of the Tribunal. The most selling ones, as I checked on PU, um, PUE Trade, was the Aura Effect and Base Stats, and mine did not have any. I think he, this one I price checked with the... Um, 96% cost and the reservation multiplier is not worth anything. So basically I said, you know what, three chaos a piece, whatever. Next. Shields, pretty much the same. I think there is only a very, very few modifiers that you can actually get on the shield, which is like max frenzy charge, energy shield on block or something like the really, really good modifiers. For my six shields, none of them hit. So I said like, you know what, three chaos, vendor it, fuck it, you know, gone. So, when it comes to the synthesized drinks, there were a couple surprises, not a lot though. So this is basically these five, I think the ones from the bottom side, one sapphire ring is worth something here in the bottom side. This is this one. Um, usually those rings all, like, are only valuable if they come with a certain combination. There is always five combinations, which is usually buff effect, damage, resistance, max resistance, and uh, pff, I don't know, anything else like mana reservation efficiency, right? And when it comes to Circle of Anguish, uh, I think the only one that is valuable is damage and buff effect. None of mine have like mana reservation, max stress. It does not matter what implicits you have, unless you have like flammability or some crazy shit, right? That would make the ring a little bit value. But you need to hit the right combination plus good implicits to get the big money out of it, right? This would be one of those. This one has cold damage and buff effect starting on like one and a half exalts. But with the highest maximum energy shield roll, um, they start on 10 or 8 exalts, and mine has even critical strike chance. So I said, like, you know what? This is probably a ring for 15x, maybe 12x, something like that, which will definitely sell. Then when it comes to the um, Circle of Regrets, I didn't see anything. The only thing here, e not even buff effect damage, I think just nobody uses this because even the Herald of Thunder builds would probably more likely use the um, Storm's Secret ring to proc the Herald of Thunders, right? Only this ring was worth 10 exalts because of the one max frenzy charge, you know? And buff effect is also like nice, but I think the only reason if somebody's ever willing to buy something like this is because of the one max frenzy charge implicit, and that's pretty much it. When it comes down to the circle of um, nostalgia with the chaos thing, poisonous concoction is meta right now, I would say, and they these boys want to have chaos damage as well as chaos resistance, like this ring here, right? And none of them were actually worth anything but these two on the, on the top here because they have both life gained for each enemy hit by your attacks. And this is always like super nice for sustain for like, you know, every time like Poison's Concoction can hit, up, uh, can hit up to like 10 times for one attack because of the overlaps with Awakened GMP and stuff. I played this myself, I know what I'm talking about. So you get a shit ton of life back. And this one, I think, was not too big because it was still um, Herald of Agony buff effect. But this ring with Chaos Res and Chaos Damage plus the 14 life, I think that was a ring for like 10x, 12x or something. And mine even has minus mana cost of skills flat, which is also like super nice. So I value this, I think, on like 15x if it sells. So that was actually a big surprise. When it comes to the circle of um, guilt, the only combination that is worth something is actually... Um, physical damage and buff effect and I think I only had one single of those and they were going for three and a half exalts and I valued mine for four exalts because uh, I think it had intelligence on the implicit let me ah, it was the first ring anyways so buff effect physical damage and I valued like half an exalts on top because intelligence usually those builds have like a tremendous amount of like Physical builds basically, Duelist Slayer, they always starve on intelligence because they're always on the bottom side here, so that should be fine too. Good. When it comes to the overall loot, this is basically... Um, this is basically all from the invitation, so I price checked every single... Just a base, okay? I did not price check the mods on it because I would sit here for the next five hours. But overall, I price checked every single um, stone here. I think the most valuable one is the Platinum... Uh, Valus rest that I have three pieces of should be like this one here. They definitely sell for like 40c the rest not really too good We got a bunch of Maven's writ and crescents actually from the invitations um, As well as I got two flat exalted drops in the maps plus one of the distant memories that also sells for 75 C and uh, the other big drops were basically um, a synthesized base with one max frenzy charge probably one exalt then um, this one is kind of sad because it's multiplier for both on a hypnotic eye Which is the caster jewel this one is actually pretty good. This is a critical strike multiplier with ones. They start on like 3, 4x. 
Um, but they were all the lower roll, like two to three multiplier, and mine has four to five and cold resistors. I think I think a belly with five exalts or something. I would not wonder if this actually goes for more because it's item level eighty five on top of that, right? And the big money maker here, this Imperial Claw with um, Fractured Critical Strike Chance T1. And I think I have them up somewhere here. So they basically start on 25 exalts, just the base alone, right? Here is a one for 45, but this is already like started to be crafted, you know? So I said like for now 25x, I checked some offline as well. They also like 20x or something. So 18x, the lowest one, um, then 20x, 24x, 25x. So I think realistically, maybe I get like 20x out of that. Shouldn't be the biggest issue basically, right? Yeah, and that basically sums up my journey here on making this uh, end game grind complete synthesized maps is now completed. And I made basically an overall um, profit of around about 7,800 chaos, uh, chaos, which is about um, 54, uh, yeah, 54 exalts. So basically I almost doubled basically my investment. And this is pretty much a scheme that I see throughout all my like, it, I wouldn't say gambling, it was more like a, a science project, you know, I, I needed to run these maps anyway, so let's just buy it so we can see the investment and the outcome. And it's always the same, I invest X amount and I usually almost double it, because in the end of the day, as long as you keep playing, you're going to make profit and we basically got it twice. So even if you say, yo, I did not find this Imperial Claw, I would still broke even basically on my finds, right? And this is not even uh, into account with like what kind of modifiers these things have or what any of the other like stuff actually will sell in the end. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.